a meeting with the budget committee. You want me Sorry, to Bill. It is a meeting with the budget committee at 6.30, but obviously we at six, a little before 6.30, we will take a pause and have the budget committee come up here and at 6.30 sharp, start that part of the uh, meeting. Are there any uh, public comments on things that are not on the agenda tonight? Nancy. Nancy Maraccio, uh, New London resident. I just want to thank the team that toured the broom facility, um, thinking about the police station site. The committee wanted you to have multiple places that you saw, and now you have. So thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Okay. Any old business? I don't see any. New business? Um, Chief Cobb, uh, you have a request to expand the dispatch center, and you provided a uh, BB and me with a with a memo. But would you please summarize what your request is? Sure, absolutely. Uh, for a little bit of of history, for um, BB, you might be aware, but um, a couple of years ago, I started looking at new computer aided dispatch CAD software and records management software for the police department. Um, having spoken with several different other departments throughout the state and looking at other vendors and things, I settled on one and ultimately applied for a grant for that software, which we were awarded. Um, my most recent conversation with the, the feds on when that money will be released is sometime in the summer. So that narrows it down from now till December, I would think. <laughs> Um, so I don't know exactly when that money will be released, but it's it's all still in the works. Um, so in order for this software to, to operate functionally um, and appropriately, we need more monitors. Um, right now, the dispatchers are operating off of three monitors in front of them and a small iPad. This software is going to require more, about seven monitors in front of them, because there are different things on different screens that they're going to need to look at and pay attention to. And so if you've um, ever taken a tour of the dispatch center, um, you'll see and recall probably that it's it's very small and very cramped in there. So um, I just don't physically have the space in that dispatch center right now to house the equipment um, in order to support this new software, um, which will be a real step forward, I think, for the, the dispatch center and for the police department, both in the, the service that we provide, not only for the town of New London residents, but also the towns that we are responsible to provide dispatching services for. Um, so, so basically we need more space. Um, and so my proposal to the board tonight uh, is to, um, take down a, a portion of the wall between the dispatch center and the recreation office. It is not the area where the rec director currently sits and conducts business with those windows that face the lobby of Whipple. It is that smaller office area, um, that's inside the, that, um, rec area that is currently used for storage. So um, there's no office that's in there. No one sits in that office currently. It's used for storage. <clears throat> so um, myself and other members of the department, we did look at every possible option um, that we could think of, including moving the dispatch center to another area of the building. Um, we really tried to get creative um, in terms of coming up with a solution to get us some more space. Um, because again, the, the amount of monitors and the amount of equipment that we're going to need in order to support this software is going to be much greater than what we have now. And we just don't have the real estate in there, both space-wise and on the wall. Um, so in, in doing so, I had a conversation with North Branch, um, seeing as they are currently in Whipple right now doing the Whipple project. And I obtained an estimate from North Branch to take down a portion of the wall. I had conversation with the project manager there. Um, and so that, that would be done while North Branch is there. Um, the cost to do this same project after they are gone in order to come back and do this project was double what the estimate was. And so the estimate that North Branch gave me um, to complete this construction project is $33,343. It does include moving some equipment um, like the, the split for the air conditioning unit that's in the dispatch center. We won't be removing, like if, you're, if you walk into the dispatch center to the immediate right is the sink, then you have the bathroom and then that longer wall. That's the piece of the wall that we're going to be removing a portion of it anyway. The fire alarm panel is in that wall. So I don't think we should move that at this point. I think that would be, that would be very 
um, costly in order to do. So we're going to remove a portion of the wall kind of after that fire alarm panel and before we get to the end of the counter um, at the dispatch center, because there's a lot of equipment right in that corner, including our DVR system for our security cameras and things um, that I think would also be very costly uh, to move. So we're going to try to maintain those two pieces and remove that portion of the wall in between. Um, the, the new monitors and, and the new um, project is going to require some, just again, some more some more space. So that would be the reason for this proposal. Um, I, I do wanna stress that it is uh, still a, a temporary solution to a longer term problem that we have in terms of space um, at the police department more globally, but specifically to the dispatch center. Um, so the, the timeline for this project, they anticipate it would take approximately three weeks to complete and they would start it about the second week of July. So they would be able to complete it while they are still on site for the Whipple project. Um, and there are some additional costs that um, would be included with this project unrelated to the construction, but those are costs that we're going to have to bear anyway, like the cost for the new monitors, um, Beltronics, our, our computer, our radio rather vendor to come in and then VC3 to come in our IT company and, and help us hook everything up. So those are additional costs. I'm working to obtain pricing on those, but those are not included in this uh, construction proposal right now. North Branch did confirm that that wall is not a load bearing wall. Um, so uh, there's no additional work in that regard, um, but that's what I'm uh, proposing to the board that we do in order to, um, to bring this really, really solid and, and great equipment into the dispatch center that I had applied for that um, sizable grant for. Thank you, Emily. Uh, David, do you have any questions or comments? I do. Go. <clears throat> Just a quick question. Can you kind of explain a little bit about the project and why we can't just kind of cut a hole in the wall to put a door into that other office and just be able to use that other space? Sure, yep. Question. And second question, um, <clears throat> I know that um, the whole space that's used for the police station is all um, protected by security doors. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to protect that space? Cause that space is now part of the rec department space. Sure. Yep, absolutely. So, um, opening up a piece of the wall, as opposed to, uh, putting in a door, uh, wouldn't really work because we need to be able to still have our dispatchers communicate with each other, um, when there's multiple people in there at a time. Um, also the line of sight from, um, another dispatching station in that office area to the front window is going to be important. So we wouldn't be able to achieve that with just a door. Um, and we're going to need the room for the, the dispatch desks. So it would be better, uh, to have more of an open space in there so that we could have a, um, a better area for our dispatchers to work in. Um, and then the second part of your question is that door, there is an off uh, yeah, door on that office right now. And so that will just become a locking door and that is included in the price. We won't put a new um, keypad on that side of it. So that'll essentially be a means of egress. I don't anticipate that we'll be coming in to the dispatch center via that door. That'll just be a second means of egress uh, for the dispatchers, which we currently don't have right now. Okay. And then my next question is just, the next question is just, where's that, where the money would come from? Uh, one place it could come from is ARPA funds, um, the American Rescue Plan Act funds, the town received in the amount of $451,003. Uh, the town has committed 50% of that money, 25% to the water precinct, 25% to the sewer. So there's a couple hundred thousand there. You could also use um, funds from the town buildings capital reserve fund, of which we're you'll be putting a hundred thousand in in July. Okay. Or you may be able to find funds in the operating budget, depending. But I think the opera funds or the capital reserve fund would be the most likely. Okay, that's it. And that'll be resolved later when the actual expenditure takes place, correct? We're not voting on that tonight. You don't have to vote on it tonight, but right. before we spend the money, you will have to decide where it's coming from. Chief, could you also just comment on what you're doing about console desks? Oh, yes. 
I guess I'm, I did. I skipped that paragraph. My apologies. Um, I was able to source some used dispatch console desks. So kind of like a glorified reception desk where the desks are able to raise and lower and withstand um, the weight of the monitors and the, the equipment that we're going to need on there. Currently, the dispatchers are working off of kitchen countertops, uh, some of which are only 18 inches in width. So that's not a whole lot of room to put a monitor on and still be able to put a phone on or um, put some paper, pen and paper on so that you can write or even a keyboard right in front of you. So it's very, very um, narrow in some of the areas of that countertop currently. So I was able to source some used dispatch center desks from another department in New Hampshire. They'll be undergoing a renovation of their own um, later this year, late summer. Um, and so I was able to source those used desks from them. Thank you. Comments, questions from the audience? Mr. Kidder? Will Kidder, town clerk, um, just the logical extension of this is that then we need to find stuff to something to hold the stuff that's in that room currently. So I think overall, and the chairs from the big room need a storage place because that's where those were going to go. So I think ultimately this would might wind up losing the conference room in there, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I just think should be thought about as well, because that would now need to be storage likely. Hmm. Now that you brought that up. Uh, so, Phil, for the recording, will you identify yourself, please? Uh, Philip Sherman. I'm, uh, I guess, chair of the Whipple Hall site at his project. Chief, I wasn't, I haven't been in the loop on any of the discussions with North Branch, but if they're cutting a price in half, that means they're planning on using some of the management and overhead time from the Whipple project to support this project. Uh, it's a pretty risky thing to have a contractor going in two different directions without a common point of control, uh, even if it's just cost allocation. So uh, perhaps you could come to the meeting tomorrow on the Whipple side and, and we could just talk that out. It'll work. I mean, there's a way to make it work. Uh, but August 15th is their deadline, and we would want to know whether this is impacting schedule or uh, their management time on the Whipple, Whipple yep, side. I, I did not um, get that impression at all from Nick when I talked to him from North Branch, um, but you're right. It absolutely would utilize some of the use of their superintendent and other things, so I can absolutely come to the meeting uh, tomorrow. What time is it? One, uh, one, one o'clock, okay. right? Yeah, one. Uh, and then in terms of the conference room, that is being used for the job meetings, their office. Uh, so if they're going to lose that, we'll need to put our thinking caps on in terms of where they can function because they do have paperwork and computers and things that, you know, can't be sitting on a piece of scaffolding. Um, we, we can use the training room downstairs. That's essentially used as storage right now anyway, having had to clean out that other smaller back room. So right. Even it's not practical to bring those chairs up and down every time, but this is in a temporary holding or, or pattern. Or maybe so. we we'll move them downstairs if that sure. works. Yep. So, okay, yep. we can talk about it tomorrow. Absolutely, yeah. Good, thank you. Yep. Cardillo? Joe Cardillo. Just curious, um, and I don't know that we've got the manpower in-house with a guy like Matt Grimes. Did we get, you know, was Matt, involved in in a walk through there to see if this is uh something that um by separating it out and i'm not opposed to north branch going ahead and doing it it's just if we've got right. something in house that is capable of doing it it might I, be at least worth the conversation yeah I, I didn't talk to matt about it because this this does involve moving like that ac split um and just kind of getting into the walls it seems like it requires a crew that's bigger than what um, matt can do by himself Lou. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Lou Bowden, New London resident. Um, my question would be is um, uh, as you're punching in through the wall and, and getting a new office there, is there any safeguard as far as um, oh, yes. uh, emanations from the, um, you know, from the dispatch? Because obviously mm -hmm. you guys deal with LEO uh, and perhaps even potentially classified information. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. There'll be a temporary wall put up to um, to keep the dust out. And um, when I talked to Nick about that, they'd put some insulation in it probably to help muffle the sound. Um, I did talk to him about, you know, 
I know that we're going to have to live through this for a very short period of time, but if we do have a major event um, that we need silent, you know, not pounding on the wall behind us and <laughs> some quiet for, then he said that that would be no problem, that they are there to, to work around that. And so um, it will be um, a little uncomfortable for a short period of time. But again, this is something that I think we really need to do because um, our, our options are, are very, very limited. Um, I would think non-existent actually, um, because we just need more space. Jay Lyon, New London Fire Chief. Uh, fire department's happy to do some demolition for you. You can have our firefighters come through and take down that wall. And no, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> with, with, with all that being said, we are pretty excited from the fire department perspective. Um, the chief was gracious enough to invite us up to a tour of another dispatch center that has this technology and looked at the various workstations. And I think it's, it's um, as she described, and, and maybe not in these terms, but it, it definitely is a, a glorified kitchen that their employees are currently operating out of. Um, so with the, the updated technology, all the departments, we talked about this at the last Kearsarge Mutual Aid meeting and, and uh, with some area chiefs, we're, we're pretty excited from pre-plans to cross streets, um, how, uh, how we better uh, gain access to locations, um, whether it be police, fire, and EMS. So, uh, it, but in all seriousness, if, if you need any help, we're more than happy to assist. Bring your Halligan tools in there. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, Kim, do you have any comments you want to make? So I would entertain a motion to approve the police chief's request for $33,343 to expand the dispatch center as outlined in her memorandum of June 6. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, our next item is finance office. Our next item is to consider a request to use the recreation van, uh, I would entertain a vote to uh, a motion to pass over this item. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. For the benefit of the of the audience, the uh, uh, Lake Summit Protective Association decided they did not need the use of the, the van. The next item on the agenda is for the uh, finance officer to talk to us about the deposit investment pool. Lynn. Thank you. Lynn Lewis, finance officer. So there's been some financial uncertainty in the past few months in the country and um, between the federal um, government debt ceiling, failure of a few banks. <clears throat> so uh, Steve and I thought it was a good idea to just update everybody on where <clears throat> our money sits and how secure it is. So this is not the trustee money. This is the daily operating budget and revenue that comes in to Will and myself. Um, a portion of the cash is at Bar Harbor. That's our daily deposits. That we're, that's where money initially goes. Um, that is insured by the FDIC. In addition, we have a home loan bank guarantee. So we are covered for up to $5 million to sit in there, which we don't usually top. Um, <clears throat> they also, I just found out today that Bar Harbor, um, the Fed decided to rate banks. And this is directly in response to the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. And they did used a rating from one to 5,000, one being you're fantastic and 5,000, you should close your doors today. And Bar Harbor's rating was a six. So we are really solid there. Um, <clears throat> our majority of our surplus money, which is currently $2.5 million, is at the New Jersey, or New Jersey, yes, <laughs> <laughs> New Hampshire Public <laughs> Deposit Investment Pool, <laughs> NHPDIP. And we, Steve Thoreau and I have a procedure in place where we monitor the status of those investments. We review their annual reports annually. Uh, the most recent was June, 2022. And then we also reviewed their investment information and determined that the risk as of right now is minimal. Um, NHPDIP, much like Bar Harbor, saw the uncertainty and made some necessary adjustments to their investments to help minimize any risk. Uh, none of their paper is over 30 days. Uh, their entire pool is $543 million. So our portion is only like 0.0046% of that. 
Um, and all cash with Bar Harbor and PDIP is um, readily available if we need the money drawn down. It's it's there within hours. Um, so really, I just wanted to be on record, you know, saying that we do take the security of the money very seriously. Thank you, Lynn. Bibi, any questions? Nope. Kim, anything to add? Anybody in the audience care to comment on this? Okay, moving right along, uh, town administrator's report, Kim. Uh, the first thing is um, we have an opening in the selectman's office for an administrative assistant. I encourage any of you out there who would like a great job in the town office to apply. We're happy to train anybody, so feel free. And if you don't want the job, please pass it along because we'd like to get that position filled soon. Um, Adam and I, Adam Ricker, the town planner, and I attended a really helpful workshop yesterday in Concord on enforcement issues. So it was very valuable. It was at New Hampshire Municipal Association. So it was very good. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, committee reports. Do you have anything to report? Um, on last week, on the 1st of June, I attended the uh, uh, monthly meeting of the uh, Water Precinct. And as usual, it was very enlightening. And on the 25th, I attended the meeting of the Waste uh, Reduction Committee, and they are continuing to work on the expansion of the composting program and are meeting again tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock to work on that. Um, priorities, uh, where do we stand in our various priorities, Kim? Okay, starting with the wage survey and classification study, department heads and I will meet with the consultant this week and we will hear from her um, how we start out with filling out our job description forms. Um, as we've discussed in the past, it's the job descriptions that will help her to determine which towns to compare which positions. So that's ongoing. We expect some results to report next week, our next meeting. Next up, the police station. Did you have any questions on the wage study aside from that update? No. Um, next up, police station. Why don't you finish this and then we'll see if there's anybody in the audience that wants to speak. Oh, okay. So the police station, um, did you want to hear from the... Um, public about any comments there? The I will after you've gone on, the, the, to, told the, us about the other two items. And okay, the so for the police station, I have contacted four video um, consultants to hopefully work on the video that you've decided to prepare. So I should have something on that at the next meeting and I will be included the chief uh, with those discussions. Capital reserve funds, we will speak to that issue at 6.30 with the budget committee and there's updated forms for everybody on that. And dispatching fees, I put that on there so you can decide how you want to approach that. Um, would you like me to give you a, a review of how we do dispatch fees? Would that be helpful? Uh, given, given the time and the fact that I think there's somebody in the audience that wants to uh, okay. address some of the other issues, let's um, see how the time goes. Uh, okay. So is there anybody in the audience who wants to address any of these issues? John. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. I, um... John, I will warn you that it is 623 and at 628, I'm going to have to uh, take a pause in this meeting to allow the budget committee to get situated. So please talk quickly, as quickly as you can. I got some, uh, uh, as you know, the last five years, we were talking about the police station, about where to put it, right? Um, I got wind that the new police station or you know what to do with it, to renovate the old building, buy a new piece of prop, buy proper property and build something or what. Um, the last suggestion was building property, of course, and as you know, that was shot down. And uh, I was one of the individuals that was against it for aesthetic reasons, largely. Uh, the building property, buying it and putting one there. Uh, okay, just, and uh, I got wind that the police are considering buying the Village Heights building uh, in town and, um, uh, I have a comment along those lines um, uh, in regard to that uh, proposal. John, can I just make an uh, interaction? The town decides what to buy, not the police department, okay? Yeah, I know that. Uh, uh, but, but the police tell me they're considering, the police are, are, are behind purchases, you know, huh? <laughs> I'm aware of that bill. Uh, 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 just to orientate you, this is um, a map that I drew, and this is Newport Road on the bottom. Um, 
This is the Village Heights building in blue right here. And to orientate you guys, this is north over here. South is sort of that like that, east and west. But for, for convenience, let's just call this north and this south. And Village Heights building, Newport Road, Crescentes or uh, Hannaford is over, over this way. The, the, the old town center is down that way. Okay, therefore, uh, uh, Sugar River Bank, if you, you know that, is right about here, right next to it. Our Harbor Bank is, is right over here, the, the, the other neighbor. Okay. Um, I recommend, uh, I have a little something written here for everybody. I recommend the town purchase the Villas Heights building on Newport Road for a new police station. Uh, the building is roughly 15 or 20 so feet up from the road and one or so stories up vertically. And so this affords some separation from the town, from the road and therefore from the town itself. Uh, this, it, that, that's in regards to aesthetics because I don't, I think new police stations don't tend to, to look so great, especially in relation to uh, old town centers, okay? And that's my opinion for you to consider. And that's a general rule. There are exceptions, um, but but this is already up one story. This building is 20 or so, 15, 20 feet higher from Newport Road, and it's also set back. Uh, so it's removed in two dimensions from the road. Okay. And uh, the building is made of brown wood. It's brown wood, it's a wood structure, it's not brick. And there, and then that's another port, point for the building. Uh, the, the police would probably want, they would no doubt want to make an extension to the building. They no doubt want if they purchase it, the town purchase it. Uh, they, they no doubt would want to renovate it and, and make extensions. Um, and, and that for me is, is fine. <laughs> Uh, John, well, one minute warning. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm sorry. Done. I'm yeah. sorry. By, by law, I have to allow the budget committee to meet at 630. Um, I, I'm almost done, Bill. Uh, I would say that uh, this is fine. There's two provisos here I would have. Um, that the present south side of the building remains largely unchanged. That is, they don't rip it down, put up a brick wall. It, it remains largely as it is. Okay, the south side of the building right here, that remains largely as is. Okay, and secondly, that um, any new renovations be placed at a distance. Here's distance X right here, distance X, is the distance from the south side of the building to the road. Any new extensions to the building would be placed at a distance greater than equal to or greater than X. Okay, so uh, therefore- John, I'm sorry to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm almost- no, just, let, me just say to you, let me just say to you that, that we appreciate- Yeah, you, right, just, just, let, let me, let, just, just let me finish. John, excuse me. You guys are- John, John excuse me. Um, we appreciate you're doing this. This is the building that is called so-called broom building that the building of facilities. Arnold, excuse me, may I finish? Just finish no, my no, point. No, no, my John. point, Bill, it's to take about two or three sentences. All right. So, and this was a big point that any new extensions to, to the Village Heights building, this is the last point, be, be at a greater distance than X. And so therefore, the extensions, the parking areas here, the main entrances here, the extensions would go right around here, or they would go in the available property over here. And I recommend purchase also of the available property. Thank, thank, uh, John, what I was going to say was thank you very much, because we've been aware of this property for a long while. Indeed, some people, as Nancy Marascio mentioned earlier in the evening, have been um, to, to visit us. And if the town decides to continue to pursue this this building, many of the issues you're talking about are uh, significant detail that obviously we will go into in much, much more time, and we appreciate your continuing to be supportive of it. And so thank you for bringing this to us tonight. I'm sorry to 
we're short on, on time, but uh, it is something that's not brand new to us. And it's nice to have somebody um, supporting this. And uh, as I say, this has been on our plate for some period of time. And Nancy mentioned it earlier this evening. So it's all part of a continuing discussion that will go on during the year. So this is, this is only the beginning, not the end. I really appreciate your, your uh, speaking up tonight. So having said that, it is 6.30 and I will uh, ask the Board of Selectmen's meeting to uh, pause while the Budget Committee gets established and uh, opens their meeting. I just wanna make sure everyone's here. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, before we begin our meeting, Mark Christensen is requesting to participate remotely, Mark is on the screen, uh, if you look ahead of you. Um, so Mark is out of state on business and is not available to attend in person. Uh, so for in order for Mark to participate remotely, uh, we need to vote on that. So I'd ask someone, do we have a motion to allow Mark to participate remotely? Sure. Any seconds? Second. All right. So uh, all those in favor for Mark to participate remotely, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, so while if we do happen to take a vote, we do need to make sure that we all vote individually and we have to record that. Um, so as we take votes on the minutes and or um, the chair and vice chair for election, we'll make sure we just go in order of individual to say a yay or a nay. Does that make sense to everybody? Great. So let's move on to uh, our first item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of May 24th. John, I'm expecting some grammatical edit. Yeah, I don't want to yes. let you down. <laughs> the the uh, I turn the button on. Uh, the minutes are supposed to be a reflection of what took place at the meeting. Uh, sometimes the narrative that went along with it didn't necessarily describe what was going on at the meeting. And I'm referring to the top of page two, where we talked about the uh, election that ended in a virtual tie, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what There were two contestants in that, uh, although it was uh, worded here that there were four people for and four people against. I think in elections for people, you don't vote for and against, you just vote for the person you're voting for. So the accurate thing of actually what happened here was that there were four votes for each candidate. There were four votes for I and four opposed for each candidate. We did record eyes and opposed. Okay. All right, then you, you don't do that. <laughs> uh, when you have candidates, you vote for them or you vote for the other candidate. Anyway. I'd look to. I was doing the minutes at like 11 o'clock at night. I did watch the video to try and see what we did. So I think, I mean, I agree with you. I hear what you're saying, but I think it accurately reflects what we actually did. So I, I think there was, who's in favor of the nomination for Lindsay? There were four people. Who's opposed? There were four people. That's how I saw it when I looked late at night. But And, and then I thought we did the same thing for Colin, but we didn't. I think it ended there. Right. Okay. So I was under the impression we were voting for two candidates. Well, there were two nominations. Right. There two separate were two, nominations. There were two separate nominations. Right. And so we you usually the first vote for one. one or the other. But, right. Okay. I disagree, but I, I'm just, that's I, just kind of how I saw it. I, okay. I, I don't think looking. anyone will go to jail for the way we did it, but just saying. I, I no, would have been I just, just clearer, probably. Okay. Yep. So that, for that, I'll let you return to business as usual here. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, thoughts or edits to the minutes? All right. Do we have any? We accept the minutes. Any motions to accept the minutes? I move we accept the minutes. Any seconds? I second. All right. So again, we're going to do this individually with roll call. So Mark, why don't we start with you? 
uh, in favor of the minutes? Yes, I'm in favor of the minutes. Okay, so why don't we, Hannah, why don't we go this way? Favor. Melissa, Colin. Favor. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Lindsay. Aye. Aye. All right. Great. Minutes pass. All right. So second uh, item on the agenda would be the election of a chair and vice chair. Um, so again, as John pointed out, last time we met, we had two nominations, which did not end in a result. So I'd look to anyone, Lindsay. Chris, um, respectfully, I would uh, like to withdraw my name, but imploringly, I would like to nominate you again, please, uh, to be my nomination for the budget chair. Okay. Any seconds? I second that. I second that. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, there was a have you changed your mind? Is that it? Uh, I have changed my mind. I think okay. based on what happened last two weeks ago, okay. I thought about it and okay. I'm happy to do that if if so, voted upon. So it's seconded. So any other discussions? Okay. So we'd want to do voting again. So have you closed nominations? No. Okay. That's why I said discussion. Okay. I'd like to nominate Colin. Okay. Great. So should we take a vote? So any seconds for Colin? I'm happy to second so we can vote. Um, or Colin, do you have any interest in vice chair? Uh, either one. Hmm? But obviously chair first. <laughs> Okay. Anything else before we start voting? Okay, Mark, why don't we start with you again? So the first vote would be for myself. Yes, I vote for Chris Lorio. Okay. Charlie, why don't we start on this side? I I support your candidacy. Great. Aye for Chris. Chris. Aye. Chris. <laughs> Chris. Colin, how about you? Sorry. Obviously, Colin. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, correct? Have I got the number right? Eight. There are ten. Eight, two, two. Okay. Eight. All right. So that passes. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so now we'll do nominations for vice chair. Any nominations for vice? I nominate Colin. Okay. Melissa nominates Colin. Second. Second. Okay. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. So we'll start with Mark. Yep. I'm. In, I vote for Colin for vice president. Uh, yeah, vice chair. I mean, that's the next step, obviously. So, yeah. 2024 is right around the corner. Hannah, why don't we start again? Yes. In favor. Okay. Yes. Yes. Having met Chris Christie yesterday, I will say I'll go for Colin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, it's me. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. So we have all yeses. So Colin will be vice chair. I'll be chair for this year. Yay. Um, all right, that is done. So now we can meet with the selectmen to discuss capital reserves. John, do you have, I know you had some questions about a working meeting versus a public meeting. I wanna make sure that's addressed. Well, we, we've passed the public meeting and we're in the working session now, so. It's it's boot. So let's just proceed. Okay. I just yep. want to make sure that your yep. your questions were answered. Yep. Okay. So I'll turn it over to the selectmen to begin. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, so what our objective tonight is is to explore the topic of so-called reserve funds as they are used in New London. We're going to employ a workshop format, which means that while this is a public meeting, we will limit comments on input to members of the selectmen budget committee, trustees of the trust funds, and the administration. 
We're also going to limit the time of discussion tonight to about 90 minutes, which will take us till about uh, quarter after um, eight. Um, my sense is that after 90 minutes of discussion on anything, um, it begins to um, tail off. And so if we can't get it done, then we'll try to have another meeting. Um, so what I wanna do is to start the uh, discussion tonight with a brief review of the statutes governing um, reserves. And then to that purpose, you all have in front of you um, a page of that describes what the statutes are. And I just wanna make sure that um, everybody understands. I mean, this is really technical stuff, but um, many of us are, are new to this. And so um, uh, let, let's just quickly go through this. Um, the town is allowed to establish both capital reserve funds and expendable trust funds. But in 1995, the legislature enacted an amendment to clarify that the same provisions apply to both capital reserve funds and expendable trust funds, regardless of what the fund is called or the statutory authority under, authority under which it was established. Therefore, the term reserve fund commonly refers to both capital reserve funds and expendable trust funds. And that's that's something I didn't realize until I dug, dug into this. So I hope everybody realizes whatever lingo is being used, the term reserve fund is sort of the, the common catch-all for, for all of this. Um, we know the reserve funds can be established to finance capital projects, capital acquisitions, extraordinary legal fees, and or to fund maintenance or operational costs. So that's important to realize the extent to which different um, uh, reserve funds can be established. Furthermore, withdrawing money from a reserve fund requires a vote of the legislative body or the town meeting. Um, we don't often think of the town meeting as being our legislative body, but it is at an annual meeting. So we only get one shot a year at withdrawing money from a reserve fund unless the town meeting has named agents to expend from a reserve fund. And on the um, schedules we have in front of us, you can see which funds now have an agent to expend so that it does not have to go back to the town meeting every time an appropriation is made. But it can only be made for the purpose for which the fund was established. So it's important that we understand in each case what the purpose of the fund is. And uh, we have some members of the uh, trustees of the trust funds here tonight, and they may want to chime in at various times to talk to us about how they view interpreting the, um, the purposes. Last but not least, after a purpose for which a reserve fund is established has been determined, no change can be made in the purpose until such change has been authorized by a two-third vote at a town meeting. So it may seem attractive to us to say, well, can't we just jiggle this around a little bit or that way? Uh-uh. If there are any changes we want to make to the wording that's on this spreadsheet, we will have to put that into a warrant article and vote on it and ask for a two-third vote at the next um, town meeting. Finally, all reserve funds are held in the custody of the trustees of the trust funds. And Joe, do you want to introduce yourself and your colleagues so that everybody knows who you are? Okay. My name is Joe Kubik. I'm a resident of New London. I'm with Jim Stepro, who's also a resident of New London. Obviously, we have to be a resident of New London to be elected to the position. Uh, Andrew Hager cannot make it today. So, Good. We're here. so all three of you are elected officials. Correct. We are elected on the ballot. We rotate. Uh, it's a three-year term. There's one person elected each year. Splendid. Okay. So any, any questions about the statute itself and the, and the rules? Those aren't our rules. Those are the state's rules, the state legislature's rules. Okay. So, Bill, sorry. Yeah. Just because we have some newer folks, yeah. um, maybe could you provide an example? Um, I'm just thinking of Charlie and maybe even some folks that are on. So when you say uh, for only for the purpose of what it's established for, for which the funds established, and we have the purpose on the spreadsheet. Yes. Right. And I'm just thinking of last year, there were some examples of, hey, could we use the capital reserves to pay for radio repair? Right. That was like an example that came up last year. Um, do you have something off the top of your head that maybe you could use as an example of well, a good example might be um, about halfway down the page here, just where the, on the left-hand side where the, there's a split. Um, the library building maintenance fund mm -hmm. is very clear that it's for the repairing and maintaining the library building. So that one's um, pr pretty clear. Um, the uh, three more down from that 
police equipment. Uh, that was the one that caused us a little bit of discussion last year. And that just says equipment for the use of the police department. So that's somewhat vaguer or maybe more precise, depending on how we interpret it and how the uh, trustees of the trust funds are interpreted. Okay. I, I also just thought, incidentally, that when we talk about what's a, a capital project, and I think um, generally speaking in New Hampshire, I've gone back and looked at what the various planning commissions, when they're talking about the capital improvement program uh, plans that the planning board brings forth, and they usually talk about projects that have a size of $10,000 or more, and which extend, which, whose useful life extends over five years or more. So that's but capital projects for those of us that came out of the business world have other definitions, but generally speaking, that seems to be, there's no, nowhere in the statute that defines it, but that seems to have been common practice. And we have a couple of so-called capital projects and that terminology going on right now that we approved. One is the uh, Whipple Hall renovation. Um, and the other is the purchase of the uh, police vehicle. Now those are two very different projects but they're not just, they're not both building related, but they both fit the category of being over $10,000 and um, being a useful life of five years okay. or more. So those are two examples of, of that. Uh, and, but that's, th thank you, Chris, just keep prompting me on. Yeah. And also for the, for the agents to expend. So the withdrawing money from a reserve fund requires a vote of the legislative body at an annual meeting or town meeting may name agents to expend from a reserve fund at any time without further appropriation. <clears throat> Just for clarification, are the selectmen agents to expend for all capital reserves? I believe we're the agents for the, all of the ones that are listed on this sheet. That's correct. Okay. But one where it says no, no, we're not the agents. Okay. All right. So right but it takes an approval of the... Town. Okay, and, and you know, they're elected officials. The trustees are elected officials. You're elected officials. Yes, yeah. you're elected officials. So if you wish to, if you look at an expenditure, and the board of selectmen wish to draw up on the draw from the trust funds, you make that in your budget. You put that in your budget. The budget committee puts that in their budget. That's that's one possibility, but another possibility is something comes along after the annual budget okay. cycle and the um, town meeting. For example, the police chief tonight suggested the one source of funds for the project that she uh, enumerated would be out of a town building maintenance fund. If that were true, and that was that's why I asked uh, Kim, we were going to take a vote on that tonight. If it was determined that we were going to take those funds from the town building maintenance fund, then the selectmen would have to vote. To but take you that still money. have to go through the trustees. The trustees would have to agree. Once we had okay. taken that vote, they would look and say, yes, that's an appropriate use of that of uh, those funds. And, and they can I, tell I, you I, an item of let's ask, let's ask them. That That is correct. Um, well, I guess by statute, three of us are elected officials and report. Uh, I tell people, we report to the attorney general's office and the voters. And so we are quasi independent of the process that people decide up there how to spend money. It just has to meet the requirements of the fund, both for the private funds that we manage, like the Tracy Memorial Library Fund, which is not the maintenance fund, but it's the Tracy Memorial Investment Fund, as well as the two bandstand funds and the Mary Haddad Fund. And we also manage five funds for the school district. And every expenditure we feel has to meet the rules of what that fund is established for. So to put you two on the spot, would you, having heard, I saw you were here earlier, heard the description of the project by the police chief, would you think that that, that $33,000 could appropriately come out of the town building maintenance fund for which the selectmen are agents and for which the, for which I would, the purpose would say based town on building the title, Based on the title of the fund, it says maintenance is allowed. I would just point out that... Um, that project by itself is one third of the entire addition to the building maintenance fund for fiscal 2024. Right. Well, that would be something that I think that you Evie would have and to, Jan would and be I would wise to find some other sources of money right now. The current building maintenance fund is like less than $1,000 for the rest of this year. Yes, that's correct. Rest of this year, meaning the rest of this fiscal year, which ends right. in another three weeks. But if somebody comes and gives me some, a voucher to pay for the, out of that fund, I can't pay it right now. Correct. 
so we don't want to go down the rabbit hole tonight of how we're going to actually fund the thirty-three thousand dollars. That would qualify. That's an example. That would qualify as an yeah, example. It would qualify. Thank you. Okay. Other questions about where we are? Yes, Lindsay. No. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just, just help me understand a little bit. Um, if there is a a project that is time sensitive, um, and we're not, or you're not an agent to expend, but we cannot wait until the town meeting. Where does that fall under? I'll turn to our lawyer and raise it. <laughs> the selectman would have to find it out of the operating budget. So okay. cuts would might have to be made in departments if there was such a situation as that. But luckily, the, the agents to expend are those accounts that typically would be things that are shorter term, like something happens with a town building. Bridge maintenance is a good one. Their agents to expend. If a bridge were to wash out, we'd be able to access those funds immediately. But there are situations in towns where something happens, there's no money in the operating, but they in that particular department, they have to the selectman would transfer funds in. Well, and I'm I'm scared to even say it because I feel like some people might be annoyed with me for bringing it up, but property acquisition and real estate transactions are time sensitive. And I know a, a few years ago we asked. There was a Warren article asking for a certain up to a certain dollar amount be put aside to allow the board of selectmen be agents to expend for property acquisition. Right, but currently the selectmen don't have the authority to purchase land without a vote of town meeting. Understood. Is that something we can discuss again to make it a capital reserve? We can discuss it at every town meeting. Okay. Right, but, but you'd need but two things there. Not only the capital reserve would have to be agents to expend, they would also have to have the ability to purchase land. Right. Well, and that's that's so kind of so what I'm two things. Into. It's not just one thing. They you actually the selectmen don't have the ability to purchase land right. without a town. And and that's that's kind of what I'm my point or kind of my confusion is um it, it you know it's real estate transactions are time sensitive. If something comes on the market that's a valuable piece of property that we could utilize in the town we don't have any way to acquire it unless we wait. And I understand we do want, you know, the general, our, our citizens to be able to decide on some of these things, but in a- Lindsay, I'm not, not going to, we're not going to go down that one tonight. The town- Okay, there we go. No, the, the, town, the town on at least two occasions recently has rejected proposals by the selectmen to allow them to purchase property. So- I wasn't even saying property. I'm just saying a, a capital reserve fund. Well. Property is different category than some of the other things you're talking about. We, okay. we, we could, we can do the building maintenance activities, for example, which is right. capital reserve. We cannot purchase property without the vote of the town meeting. Understood. I just, even though it's time sensitive, and that point's right. been made at various town meetings and also by the Conservation Commission related to their acquisition. So, but we don't have that authority. Bingo. Well, and and that's, not, to give up. that's not tonight's discussion. Okay. Unless Chris wants it to be. No, I think that makes sense. Yeah. And I, Mark, just for you, I know you're online. So shout out if you have any questions. I have a question, Chris. Go ahead, Colin. Uh, so the purpose on this page, I, you know, there's a few key words, but I wonder what would it take to actually generate the Warren articles themselves, which have the details behind it. So, for example, conversation we had yes, last year about fire department radios, it's three words and the Warren article probably talks about whether it's maintenance or purchase or thereof. So would it take a lot to generate that detail? You have it. Kim, <laughs> you're going to talk about how, okay. how Warren articles get generated? No, no, I'm not, I'm not looking for that. I'm just saying that the, the original Warren article gives you the details as to what those three words mean, right? What three words? I'm just using an example. Fire, department, radios. Right. So what we did, Lynn and I went through all of the Warren articles and we put the phrases in that were in the Warren article. You know, so, it says more like to see if the town will vote to establish a Warren uh, capital reserve fund with the, sometimes it says in the name of or and, and sometimes it'll actually say for the purpose of. And we put that in here. So is it for the purpose? My, my point is, that as long as there's, there's information that we have access to. Again, using that example, is it for the purpose of purchasing or is it for the purpose of repairing or is it for the purpose of both? Those three words don't tell you what that is. So right. my so, only point is that 
there's more detail on each of those Warren articles that may provide greater clarity as to what those words mean. Yeah, and what I'm saying is I don't think so. I think we tried to get exact the pertinent phrases from each Warren article we looked at. And like one with the library one, there was actually two Warren articles. One that actually went and said um, something about actually maintaining the building as well. So I, I don't, I'm not sure that we would get, we can supply you with all of the copies, but what I'm, what we tried to do here is put any pertinent statement that was in the capital reserve fund. Some of them are really like just a fire department radios. So then, okay, if, if that's the case, then as again, as an example, uh, for the purposes of, of that particular category, since it's broadly stated, we can either maintain or, or fix or buy new. Right. And that's when we would go to the trustee of trust funds and say, do you think this follows that? Well, we would do our own search of the documents if it came, if there was something that was up for discussion that was not obvious. So, okay. But Lynn it, has a huge binder there of stuff. Right. And so, so to that point, though, for last year, as an example, when that came up, the, the, the decision was no, as far as using that fund, and I'm using the fire department radios as the example, the decision was no, not to repair. It was to purchase new radios. I don't know if that was the thing. It was more like, uh, can the highway maintenance department budget be used to do oil changes? Is the phrase that I remember particularly. You know, routine maintenance is not part of a capital project. Right, right. Okay. So, so Colin, thank you for asking that question because it goes right to the what I'd like to move, keeping my eye on the clock tonight to the five issues that I outlined um, on the agenda for tonight, uh, which is the purpose of each existing reserve fund clearly stated. And then I guess the um, corollary to that is, if not, what would we like to do about it? Sounds like, do you have views on that or are you happy with the way they're stated now? Well, or anybody I, else? I, I, I'm go, again, I'll go back to the fire department radio three words. Um, I guess if it's generally categorized that way, then it's for any expense associated with fire radio, fire department radio. So I'm fine with it. Go ahead, Len. I, Chief, we will, we will let the, the police chief is part of administration, so she's allowed to participate. Thank you. As a department head, if I have a, a large capital expenditure, I would immediately go to that warrant article at first pass to see if I thought it fit. Um, so if we'll use, um, I don't know, communications equipment, um, I would go right to that warrant article to see if it was even something that I thought would fit if I had a large capital expenditures. And I'll use the dispatch consoles, the, the screen that the dispatchers touch to tone the radios and to talk on the radio. If, if those needed to be replaced, my first look would be to the communications equipment fund. So that's that's the first safeguard. And then it would go to... I assume the board and, and so forth and so on, and ultimately to the trustees. So I, I feel like there are several um, several bites at the apple, so to speak, to make sure that that expenditure is allowed by that capital reserve. Yeah, and I think that's wonderful, the checks and balances there. And, I, and I, I'm not questioning that. All I'm saying is that for the purposes of planning, right, the budget committee has to plan and we make assumptions in that planning about where things belong. So let's use communications equipment. You propose today that you need to buy a lot more um, a lot more monitors, monitors hard computer right. use the communication equipment to do so. I would absolutely look to that to okay. see if it's a okay. allowable expense under that. Yep. But I, sorry, Lynn, you have a question. I don't, I just wanted to point out going back to the, the fire radios. The original warrant article actually says to see if the town will vote to establish a capital reserve fund under the provision of RSA 35. That's one for the purpose of fire department radios and to raise an appropriate. So that the three words really is what's in there. So we really tried to, so that may be something to address. Right. And so I think, Colin, to the point you're making though, right, my concern is that we pick and choose this year if it's to repair some radios, but next year we don't do it and using capital reserves as a way, is as part of the operating budget and, and doing that indiscriminately versus having a purpose for the capital reserve. Okay. I would I would, I would just I would caution us using the word capital reserves as its reserves. It could reserves. be reserves. It, it is could reserves. be for capital or otherwise. So unless the Warren article explicitly and some of them do 
explicitly state capital, then arguably it could be for either capital or expense. So that's another area where it's, clarity is important. The Warren article may have actually said capital, at which point you've got to stick to the word capital and the definition of capital. But if it doesn't say capital, then arguably it's reserved for anything. And, and that's another point of clarity we should understand. Well, about. It, it's a reserve for anything dependent upon the, the agents to expend in that situation. So again, in, in the situation of a radio repair for fire, and I know Chief has his hand up, that would also be dependent upon who's the agent to expend that if, they're, if they agree that that's an appropriate expense, right? Chief. As the individual or department head that requested a reserve account to establish funds set aside for radios, the design was to re to replace radio. So after September 11th, uh, there were a ton of funds that were given out. The money that was set aside was to replace those radios that were coming in, not for radio replacement. For our operating budget, we have that. No different than our self-contained breathing apparatus, our SCBA, because of the cost incurred in purchasing 25 air packs um it's that that fund was established for the purpose of buying new new scba our flow tests our annual checks on our air packs the annual maintenance is taken out of our operating budget so both of those cases i was uh part of establishing those reserve accounts and at least from the fire department planning perspective, that was um, the, the idea behind those particular accounts. Our apparatus account was established by Peter Stanley, I believe in 1991-ish uh, um, for the purpose of new uh, vehicles specialized vehicles, whether it be our ladder engine, utility, whatever the case may be, not necessarily looking at it from a maintenance perspective. So chief to support Colin in this, however, the language that was actually used was much broader than what you're describing. And so therefore, at least theoretically, he and the agents and the trustees could go beyond what you state your purpose to be. Although I also hear Joe saying that they might investigate to the record to see what you asked to go on the warrant as opposed to what the warrant article actually said. But those are uh, uh, all under, three under, excellent uh, examples of where yes. the language is broader than what you've just said. Understandable. And, and whether that means that the verbiage needs to be cleaned up to be more specified, um, so be it. So okay. I, I, just one last comment, Bill, in this regard. I, and I don't know whether this exercise is going to come up with recommendations or things to think about, but um to the point that the chief is making i think for each reserve account we may want to think about do we want more general language or do we want specific language in my opinion general language opens up the opportunity to use it for other things so that when emergencies come about uh, you have access to it without being constrained by specific terms in language but so it's something we should think about so i i would suggest i'm glad you asked about what's going to happen at the end. I would ask, suggest at the end that the three separate elected bodies consider the discussion we've had tonight and in their own deliberations, see what they might want to change. Because I, I'm not sure that the, um, whatever, not 15 of us or something are going to come to any conclusion, but, it, but at least what we're doing here is making sure, first of all, that everybody understands the box that we're in. And second of all, I'm starting to make a list of questions and I'm sure other others are, but. Uh, we're not we're not going to resolve everything tonight. We're going to hopefully leave with a good feeling about what each group ought to want to come back and and talk about. I think that's great. And to the extent we could have one list, however we want to create that, so that we're all talking from the same line, same yeah. sheet of music. Well, this meeting is being recorded, so I suspect we'll be able to, each of us to figure that out too. Chris, anything else you want to do with the budget side of this? I'd look to budget committee members if they have any questions. I have one question to the trustees. Um, are any of the balance fund balances invested in short-term interest-bearing instruments so we get a return or are we allowed to do that or not? If you could 
comment on that. I appreciate it. Okay, so we manage as a group uh, different types of fund that, funds that have different purposes. So we have private funds like the library fund, the Bansed fund, the unrestricted and restricted Mary Hatter fund. Um, those are not taxpayer money funded. So we can be a little broader in terms of what we invest. For town money and also, also for the school district money, we are basically limited to buying CDs, U.S. Treasuries, and government bonds because those are we're, we're supposed to be considered uh, two priorities are probably as highest in our thing is salvation of principal. We don't want to take a loss if we have to, don't know, unless we actually had to, um, and trying to get the best interest earned over some life of the project. So that comes to the question of what we struggle with is you guys have these funds that you create, but you don't really tell us when you're going to spend it. So therefore, do we invest short term now where rates are like 5% mm -hmm. or do we go out and invest for two years where rates are 4%? Right. Uh, of course, six months ago, PDIP, which is a good fund that's paying now 5.1%, was paying, I think, 0.1% right. when the rates were very, very low. So we didn't have any money in those funds. We were in the longer terms, we were paying three or four percent. So, so does it's... the um, so you have to be pretty agile in terms of how you think about investing. And we meet, does... four, we meet between four to six times a year. We always talk about who's going to be spending money out of the fund. Uh, for example, here now. So a couple of months ago, we were told by the school district that they need two hundred thousand dollars out of their building maintenance fund for new boilers. So we basically set aside a chunk of short-term money for them that we can just write a, get a check out the next day or two. Yeah. Does the interest on an investment in your back to the specific fund or is it a general pot? No, How every fund work? is considered a separate fund. And the most extreme example that if we had to do what the state requested would be that every perpetual cemetery plot that is in the town of London, all 818 of them, would have to be reported as a separate fund in the annual report. I got you. Okay, thank you. And Bill, this is a question just in general terms around uh, capital reserves. <clears throat> is there a time horizon that we look at for maintaining the funds? A five-year time horizon in perpetuity? Um, is there any guideline to help us think about um, the amount of we have in funds? Char Charlie, the answer to your question is yes and no. Um, on a regular basis, the finance officer prepares a schedule of expected expenditures over yep. a period of time in consultation mm -hmm. with the department heads, the town administrator, and so on. Um, do we religiously abide by that? Not necessarily. And I think but the, on the big ticket items, certainly, um, yes, but on funds that are c called maintenance activities here, um, you know, a building may suddenly um, need to have a right. new boiler, as the schools are finding yeah, out. I, and I, I think the trustees over the years have probably thought about that and have an idea about what they expect to have come from it, but right. um, there's there's no rigid schedule. There is a, a schedule prepared by the finance yeah. officer. My, my question was direct around how we ought to think about this going forward. <clears throat> there's a sizable pot of money. If the money is sufficient is one question for anticipated needs over a time horizon. And then some percent, percentage should be there, I would think, for the unanticipated. And, and for the amount of money, I'm not making a determination, is it enough or not enough, but in general, how we should think about it going forward, because any monies that would be sitting there for years, never expended, is really taxpayer money that could be potentially returned if it was not going to be used. Correct. Yeah. Chris, you want to add anything? No, I was just going to say to Charlie, like a good example would be, and I'm sorry, Chief, I'm going to use the fire again. Yeah. There's a schedule for money every year for purchases of, of fire equipment, as well as trucks, things like that. Yeah. But let's use last year as an example, the Selectmen and Budget Committee decided to half the amount of capital reserves. So that could affect Chief's decision in the next five or six years to buy that equipment, because what, what was originally scheduled every year has now let's just say that was half, right? right? So that truck might need to get put off for a year that they were planning to purchase in 2027. 
right? So those situations do come about. Okay. So or I, we might decide oh, to double up. Yeah. And we've done that with, well, that actually came out of operating costs, right? The, did the vehicle two, took two police cars? Operating budget, right? So that wasn't a good example, but yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to suggest we we move on and uh, can, can I ask just one quick? Oh, question? sorry, John. Uh, I, I I I want to commend you for doing this. In all the years I've been involved with budget committee, this is quite. Uh, it, you know, I'm really surprised the stuff that's in here I never knew. Uh, anyway, um, when it comes to uh, the power for the selectmen to expend funds out of a capital reserve account. It says it does it without appropriation. Uh, so, what, what, how is the record kept of that and carried forward when we're dealing, say, with the budget for the next year? Is that money just nowhere? Uh, I mean, it's not added to the. Uh, it's not added to the overall previous year's it budget. Out, it or? shows right here as a payment. It's just it was a payment made by authorization of the selectmen as agents, as opposed to an appropriation approved by the town meeting. That's right, it's in the same column as payments. Yeah, I, okay, I under, I under, okay. So that's yeah. where it's recorded. I think John's asking, how does it flow to the budget so that we see the end, the end of your budget? It's, I, it's outside of the budget. So, so if the selectmen are agents to expend, let's talk about the $100,000 that's going into the town buildings. Selectmen are agents to expend. So the appropriation has been made, $100,000. The selectmen may spend all or part of that appropriation over one year, two years, three years, four years, whenever. The public and budget committee see balances of the capital reserve funds in the town report. So you know the money that's coming in and out. So the appropriation happens when the money goes into the fund and then payments or expenditures go for several years maybe maybe there are no payments or no expenditures so, so you, as we all know you can't spend money without an appropriation right there right. has to be an appropriation to spend money right so in this budget 2024 budget you have the town meeting raised and appropriated one hundred thousand dollars to go into the capital reserve fund for town buildings right the selectmen then are since they're agents to expend they may spend that appropriation as they see fit only for the purposes of town buildings maintenance. And if they do spend money, Joe will, on his forms for capital reserve funds, will show that expenditure, that withdrawal from the fund. But in, in most cases, when we are expending money from capital reserves, that takes another appropriation to get it out, right? It does. Be if the selectmen are not agents to expend, yes, right, that's right. true. And so that appears on our overall budget each year. But when we do it, it as a special warrant article, it shows as a warrant article, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. But when we do it with the selectmen expending it, right, that doesn't appear any place here other than just payments made, right? That's right, because this, the town meeting has said, selectmen, we're going to allow you to spend that money without asking us again. We've already told you you can spend 100000 Here it is. You don't have to come to town meeting to ask again. Okay. In other cases, there are other capital reserves where the town meeting retains that right to make decisions individually. Thank you. So I'm going to give you a nice example that's been running around in some of our meetings recently is the <clears throat> General Cemetery Maintenance Fund of 120 some thousand dollars. We're not agents to expend that. So somebody has suggested, why don't you use that fund to paint the fence by the cemetery? Sorry, we can't do that without a town meeting vote. Okay. Again, trying to move move on and cover all of these things and see where we end up. Um, should any existing funds be closed? This should be a, a, a yes or no. Does anybody see anything on this list that should be closed? I would suggest that the GIS update, which has no balance in it, could be closed. <clears throat> well, I guess the only question would be, would, will we eventually do another GIS update? At, we, at which point we would have to go to town meeting anyway. Um, to appropriate funds for it. So uh, GIS stands for? Geographical Information System. Yeah. Okay. So property lines, those types of things. Yeah. Simply for um, 
good housekeeping. Yeah. I, I, I'm just I'm just asking the question. Now. No, I don't. Uh, no, no particular reason so other than to how much was open the, the discussion. How much was the last GIS update? It was a few years ago, right? I think the total cost was probably 110 or 120 thousand dollars. We mm -hmm. did it over a few years, mm -hmm. and we but we we, we we took it out of reserves. Yes, yes. that fund was used. So, yep. so I, I it's a question for the rest of the budget yeah. committee. Do we want to? We'd have to either put that in operating expenses or as we, how often do we do GIS updates? Once in a lifetime. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't so, know. I don't know enough about the science of it. It took, I want to say seven or eight years to save up enough money to do it. But I mean, you can close it. I mean, if you close it, that means you, you have, to, have to actually, right. You'd Correct. have to establish another one if you ever wanted to save for that. Right. Bill, so, I have an example. So uh, at the town meeting, we closed, the town closed the sewer lagoon fund which was created, I don't know how many years back, to fill in the lagoons, yet I'm still carrying 5000 some odd dollars in funding for that because you haven't told me to give you the money back. Oh. <laughs> okay, but it's closed officially by the town, but it's not closed in the, in the trustees' books until you ask for the money. Otherwise, they're carrying the, the balance. Does that require a town vote to get the money back? No, I don't think no, so. We'll, we'll just give him a copy of the meeting minutes of town meeting <laughs> minutes so he'll can see that it's a valid town meeting vote. Right. Yep. And that money, we got understand, we go into the general funds. Is that correct, Lynn? Yes. That's what the vote was, I think, okay. town meeting. Yeah. I, I just used the GIS thing as an example to see if anybody, if that was an obvious one sitting here. Yeah. Anybody have anything that they think uh, is on here now that is inappropriate and, and ought to be... Um, Cleaned up and and disbanded. Well, if I go ahead, Lynn. At, my only I I see the GIS. My only concern there is as technology and ways to map and coordinate things evolves. If, it's possibility we would need another GIS update as opposed to like the sewer lagoons, which are a physical thing, which were filled and then are done. Um, so I I wouldn't necessarily want to close Great. a capital reserve yeah. that we Great. might have some future intent for. This may be an easy one. It may be, you know, that there's no particular reason to close any of these funds, Colin. I, it's sort of a version of closed. Uh, I wonder and whether we should have a conversation today or some other time about consolidating accounts, ah. provide us greater flexibility. I I think that would mean, though, that we would have to go to town. Oh, yeah. Even to, closing them, we have to go to town. We'd, we'd have to create a new capital reserve, yeah. a new reserve, and have that voted on yeah. by town. Correct. Good Good. Good yeah. point. Okay. Yeah. Probably another another time. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to add to that thought stream. Um, seems to me the consolidation makes a lot of sense. One that looks obvious is building maintenance. We have a lot of buildings, and we've separated out individual line items or reserve funds for certain buildings. And if it was a consolidated fund, it would give greater latitude um, in time of need, as well as um, thinking about, to your point, Lindsay, the timing of uh, a need. Second, I propose a technology, uh, information technology reserve fund of which a GIS item might fall within. And as we look to the future, I think we're gonna see more technology opportunities and needs. And if that were a fund within that, the purpose could be written in such a way that it would allow a greater flexibility and maybe overarching um, uh, reach to technology uh, opportunities and needs. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Sure. Other comments about this one? Yeah, our CIO is is here. Would do you want to? You have to hold on, Mike. We have to. Can you state your name as well for yeah. those on Zoom? Michael Williams. Um, there, there is a non-capital reserve um, account for uh, computer equipment. Computer maintenance. Uh, that, that's we have a computer maintenance fund. Again, um, Mike, we're, we're saying they're just all reserve funds, whether they're capital or discretionary. No, yeah, but it was specific, as I recall, it was a specifically a non-capital reserve fund. Mm. But it's not on this list. 
Unless it's not different. Yeah, it's, commu it's computer maintenance. One, two, three, four, ah, one down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In 1997. So there's, a there's a computer maintenance, but then there's also lots of line items in everyone's budgets for computer okay. maintenance been used and to, software. I don't recall that ever being used to repair a computer. And it's always been replacement, but. I heard when they established it, it was when uh, servers were like $25,000. Right. That's why they established it. But I don't even think we need servers yeah, or pretty right. soon we won't need them. It was okay. established in 1997, Mike. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. But that's a, that's a useful point. Thank you, Charlie. I, and I think as the selectmen think about, I know that you're taking up the discussion around computers and just the cost in general of services and software, software that that could be one that is, Charlie, like you mentioned, whether combined with GIS or re reframed as far as the purpose. Yeah. I would um, suggest that it should be updated since in over the last, what, 25 years? Is that was established it's just, things have changed a lot well we're spending probably more i'm assuming we're spending more money on just licenses and those types of things and we actually are on the systems right so good good points bill i, I have one and it may not be here maybe later but it's not on your list is as we're looking at the funds do we want to look at the agents to expand and modify them mm -hmm. specifically put some yeses where they are currently no so that the select board has flexibility to do this kind of things that, so we, we you talked about the cemetery maintenance and for us to go to the town meeting and say, I, I wanna paint the cemetery on Main Street is silly, right? So in the other other area is a uh, DPW building. I mean, if there's an issue there, we have to go to the town, town meeting to get approval to spend money at the DPW building. So just two examples, we might wanna look at that. I raised that question some while ago in the, um... Um, somebody with a even more Yankee in them than, than, than me said, the problem is you don't necessarily want to go ask the town meeting to do something like that and open up the question about, well, why are we letting the selectmen do anything? <laughs> well, that'd be an interesting discussion. <laughs> I, I, I think it's worth the, worth the conversation. I, I understand that. But fortunately for the uh, DPW building, uh, it was only $1,800 anyway, so Bob's not going to go wild mm -hmm. on that. Okay, I'm going to suggest we skip over three for a few minutes just to guessing where the, some of the discussion is going to go and go to the question, of, should there be a target fund size for any of the existing reserve funds? Uh, should there be such targets, for, particularly for the conservation land acquisition or energy conservation fund? And you may, um, some of you may recall that several years ago, the Conservation Commission um, in 2000 and um, three asked that we uh, give them a target of $500,000 uh, and year in and year out, they bring that up. And we, some, we don't pay, we pay attention to it some years and not others, but that's an example of where there has been a uh, discussion about having a target. And Bibi might wanna talk about targets that the school board has used uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in the school district, we did we do have targets on all of our reserve accounts, and they they were usually said through discussions with the different department heads. So, for example, we have a um, special education fund for uh, un, for for a, for example, a child that might move into the district with very complex needs, and we set that target at around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars because that's kind of what the top expense could be for a child with that much with that, with, you know, that would have to be sent uh, out of the district. So I think it's a, I think it's, it's a good practice. And for example, this year um, with the budget, we, we, we were collecting $50,000 every year for one particular account. I can't remember which one it was, but we were going to hit the target. So we were able to say to the taxpayers, we only need to collect $25,000 this year. And uh, the funding of the Reserve accounts of the school district works a little differently than the way that the accounts are um, funded for the town. So that was the process that we went through to do it. Um, so I, I go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, thank you. Um, just to clarify too, that within the school district, there were there were subcommittees meeting with the department heads to create that recommendation for that. There's a finance, yeah. yeah. There's a if finance we weren't an audit committee, yeah, we were then, the, then they would bring the recommendations to the board, and then the board would vote on those target numbers. Correct, but we weren't all sitting 
just in a meeting blindly throwing out numbers. No, no. It, was, it was a process. Yeah, it was a, it was a process. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So I, I think, um, BB, that's a good idea, Bill. I, I, I would say, uh, starting with the department heads and it sort of relates to another note about here, you know, should the equipment asset life assumption be looked at? Should, should what? I'm should sorry. the equipment asset life assumptions be looked at? So for example, if we have uh, a reserve account for fire equipment. <laughs> you should just leave now, Chief. <laughs> so we can pick on someone. <laughs> Uh, or or a DPW equipment doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a life there's a life assumption on the asset, whether it's three years, five years, ten years, uh, and and to gather that information in advance as to what the department heads are thinking would give us a sense of a longer term financial plan, right? And and that could help us identify over what number of years we need to collect how much money. And it would also give us a conversation with the department heads to say, now what would happen if you went twelve years instead of ten years? Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. kind of the big. So thing. it's been my assumption, Colin, along the way, and obviously this what our discussions this past year have maybe brought that into question. That we had that in the sense of the spreadsheet that Lynn and the department heads have put together. And so if the um, the expected life of the ladder truck is X, that's why the fire chief has put um, a, a hold place that. 15 years out for a new fire truck, new, new ladder truck. I, but I'm not sure we've um, uh, exercised that as, as tightly as we, we, we might have, but I think that that's been there. And, and similarly, um, the CPI, which is done by the planning board, has a certain amount of that data for a six year period of time. They, they put in numbers and say, well, here's what we think is going to be where we're going to need a new uh, set of trucks for the DPW and so on. But, and, and to another point, there is a, I had to ask Lynn what the name of it was. I sit on it, the capital improvement. Yeah, planning or CIP. Yeah. yeah, it's basically going over with the department heads, the appropriate dollar amounts to put into those those funds. Chief. Uh, our chair is 100% correct. Uh, a good example of that would be our air packs. Uh, as our air packs were being tested a couple of weeks ago, the individual said, you realize that these are reaching the end of their life. Once they reach 15 years, they can no longer be serviced. The company will no longer touch our air packs. And hence the reason why we've been putting away a certain amount looking at those target funds. As we come to um, the conclusion of their life expectancy, we're able to dial in the amounts either up or down. Unfortunately, it's going to be up for our air packs, um, especially in lieu of, of last year's reductions um, in order to meet that 15-year requirement. Other fire departments have not been on top of this have had an issue with their air pack, sent it in, and the company won't service it. And all of a sudden they're stuck with, oops, each air pack is $10,000. What are we going to do to replace 15, 20, 30, 40 of them? Yep. Yeah, I feel like the, the for most of the reserve funds that those long range plans have happened. I think the challenge with the setting the target, it's nice to set a target, but let's also remember that every you know, four or five years when there's some economic situations that then the budget committees and selectmen decide to remove reserves, that, that uh, and that's just a natural thing that's going to happen. The department heads now have to plan again. So we can continue to target dollars, but are we going to hold ourselves accountable to meeting those targets when times are tougher? And it, as last year's an example, we didn't. So I, I, you know, what we didn't have include, well, I don't recall, and maybe we didn't really have in our conversation as we started cutting those things, the target dates, right? We didn't, we, we have the years, the, the years exist. But we didn't, we didn't talk about what are the implications. We didn't have a specific conversation about what are the implications of cutting this in half to the objective two years from now, or right. said differently, what do we, what happens if you miss it two years from now? It's well, sort of, it, I think, I think that the somewhere in the town, whether it's the select board or the budget committee, 
where the trustees would be to, to look at all those assumptions and say, considering the economics we're in and considering the change in technology, the life of assets could go either longer or shorter, depending on what you're talking about. Um, cars live longer than they used to, you know, and, and computers might live le uh, shorter. That we begin to play around with a conversation that says, now well, maybe the budget is better off served by extending the life of that equipment three years. And we don't have those conversations. So I would say the conversations happen and I'll let the department heads have those conversations that they plan for that. That's their, that's part of their job. We can have those conversations, but again, I'll use chief as an example of he's planned out five or six years or even longer with those dollars, thinking about what a fire truck may cost in 2028. And now when there's a recession or oh, we may have a recession that we've decided to have those funds. And now he has to now plan out to change his target fund for what that looks like in 2027, 28. So I believe that most of the department heads do do that long-term planning, but they're at the mercy of the selectmen and the budget committee when it comes to difficult times. And I don't recall a time when the budget committee has said, oh, we have good financial situations. Everything's going well. Let's add more funds to our capital reserves because times are fine. That has not, I've been here 12 years. That has not happened. The only thing that we do as a select board or as a budget committee is cut funds. We don't add additional funds. So if we're going to have target funds, at least from my perspective, we should try and meet target funds. And if we have a year where they're not being met, then when the times are better, we should try and put more money in there to meet those funds. Yep. Go ahead, John. And, and I think I agree, but I also have seen over the years where certain specific funds have been overfunded and money that's put in it is essentially locked up and trapped. And so I would say, okay. I, we, could you provide an example? Uh, no, because I wasn't ready to have this discussion tonight, uh, um, but I, 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 I will work on it in okay. my spare time. Oh, the, uh, but I, I think there are, there. I look down here, there's three and a half million dollars in the funds that we're looking right here. And over three years, that number has stayed about the same. Uh, now, you have to see it over a ex more extended period of time, like 10 or 15 years to see how level it, it is. But uh, in the past, uh, probably 10 years ago or so, we had a house cleaning, came up with a, a quarter of a million dollars in the capital reserves that just plain wasn't uh, being used. So uh, I'm hoping with the software that we're talking about and so forth, that we're gonna be able to take these funds and do running totals on them. Uh, and I, don't, I wouldn't say yearly, I think probably you run when you get the information on it and make sure that, uh, that we're properly funded. And uh, uh, so anyway, that's my comment there. Okay. Yeah, I will see you back there. So Bob. One thing I'd like to point out is um, a few years back, the, uh, a few of the items were stretched out in the highway department, meaning uh, mainly the frontline trucks. So we stretched them out to about a dozen years and the recommended life expectancy of that is seven. I'm comfortable with going the 10 to 12, but one of the issues I've run into that I've noticed, and I'm sure you guys have seen it, the budget is the maintenance keeps creeping up and up and up. Um, so that's one downfall. And the other one would be the fact that every time you push something back, you end up jumbling stuff in the end. So you end up with a bunch of worn articles. Great, thanks. And Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah, just like to point out, you can't treat each of these funds the same. I'll give you three examples of how they, how they differ. Uh, energy conservation, we were, my wife and I were involved with Jamie Hess four or five years ago, we'll get the money to set aside for the solar systems on the highway garage and in the sewer fields. So the deal was the town would put in $30,000 $30, a year for five years, and that would give the town the money to purchase the system at that point in time. Well, the 24 appropriation cut to 15. So to come up with the money for the in the end of 24 for 25, it's gonna be have to be uh, $45,000 raised in the last year. 
to be able to buy the system at the appropriate time. That's one example. The fire truck that uh, is on order is going to require, Lynn can correct me if I'm wrong, $132,000 addition to the capital fund for the next four or five years. That can't be cut because that truck has been committed to buy at a certain point in time. And that's the only fire truck that's being funded by that account. And the other one was the Conservation Commission, who always keeps asking for money to buy land. They never have been able to buy anything because they never have enough money. The land purchases that have been approved by the town through the Mary Haddon Fund have been the last bunch of purchases, including the one that's still outstanding uh, to, to Esther, Esther Courier area and those land down there. And so the Mary Haddon Fund has served basically as a conservation land vehicle and it's slowly uh, going down down to a couple hundred thousand dollars from down from its peak of maybe before I came on, maybe half uh, eight hundred thousand dollars or so. So the town has done some things that you can't do everything the same way for every different fund. Every fund is in, individual in terms of what it's purpose for. And so I would encourage you to spend time thinking about that. Setting targets is great, but if you set a target for a firm commitment to be for a bill to be paid in five years, that money has to come in on a timely basis, or you're gonna be facing some big increases at a point in time. Absolutely. Charlie, you have a thought or question? Thought is, is there any uh, metric that <clears throat> could direct um, the total value of capital reserve funds as proportional to the town's operating budget? Rather than setting individual fund targets, you know, just in general, to keep it simple, is 3.5 or $3.3 million as a percentage of our operating budget, a sufficient amount of money in reserve for known and unknown expense? Or is 3.3 million not enough because we've got some kind of overarching um, metric that says it should be more and each year we look at it that way, understanding department heads are going to dial into the detail and and uh, be very deliberate about how they think about capital expense and operating expense. Is there anything out there that could guide us or should we think about it or could we in that way? I, I mean, I think we have, if we went back many years, we could see what percentage of capital reserve compared to operating. So, budget. and then to simplify, if, if we could ever do that at a town meeting, um, a warrant process, would a warrant, could a warrant be developed to fund a percentage versus always dialing to specific items? <clears throat> I, I think, but the, I get, and maybe I'm misunderstanding your question would be, it would be dollars, right? But then those dollars have to be allocated to each reserve fund. Right and let the people who are smartest at doing that, the department heads probably and select board make the I don't determination. Know if, I don't know if we could do that though. I don't know if we would have a bank of dollars. Are you saying there. like have one giant capital reserve? No, well, I'm not suggesting that. You, you have to be specific about the amount of money. So town meeting voters would have to know. Yeah, you want so to if, if we said the percentage was 5% made up and that equated to $500,000. Yep. The town approves the 500,000 in the warrant. Yeah. Can't do that. No. That's no. too bad. No, because each each <laughs> amount of money has to, the voters will say where it's going to go. So they couldn't just say 500,000 unless you listed each and every warrant, each and every reserve fund, which is kind of how we do it. We list a whole list of reserve funds and we okay. say an amount of money for each. But your your point, I I'm that's not a bad idea thinking about it like that, but I don't I'm not aware of any towns that say we're gonna have capital reserves of X percentage of our operating budget. You could think yeah. about it that way, but town meeting voters would need in a specific amount of money for a specific fund. Okay. If you did that, but if you did that, if you if we considered that, <clears throat> then we would know. And at any given point in time, if we're at an appropriate level or an inappropriate level. Right. Yeah. I think and then that could direct more detailed conversation to apply it to a specific. 
to your point, if the operating budget was 10 million, we could say if it's been 25% of operating budget, are we this year, is that the appropriate amount to then split between all of the? So I, I get I definitely yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. There is a there is a, there are guidelines uh, for nonprofits, not suggesting that we are such, but uh, for nonprofit entities uh, around the establishment of capital reserve funds. And um, that might be a resource we could explore if that were value the committee and the select bird saw in us doing that work. Great. I just want to stop. Melissa and Hannah, you've been very quiet. Everybody else has got to turn. I, if I missed you, did you have either of you want to say something or ask questions? No, the only thing I've been thinking is that really we need to also consider our assets. I think one of the things we heard last year was around building maintenance, roof repair, and caution that you know somebody had done the calculation of how many square footage or whatever the term is you know square of roofs that would need to be replaced and how are we factoring in those um, projected expenses in the future and thanks well i say no i'm taking it all you're in. taking it all in okay I, I want to give a shout out incidentally to the to the library trustees on this one the one here and the director they do have a plan of the type we're talking about. So um, uh, if we just want to take a look at their plan, we can see what one other elected body has has done. So I'll give you that shout out. Um, <clears throat> Kim, anything you want to add? I was going to pipe up, John. I think the account you were thinking of was highway equipment. You, you took a closer look at it several years ago, and that was the account that you realized that the funding was kind of out of whack over years. Yeah, that's exactly it. I, I thought of a specific six wheel dump truck with sander and plow, seeing you want an example. And we had, uh, we had uh, scheduled $285,000 to buy that. And I think it came in under 230,000. So you, you had some $50,000 there that was it needed or was it too much or, or what? But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm hoping with the software that we would follow things like that and have a, a continual uh, accounting of, of where we are to make sure that we're not too much and not too little. And if it's too much, it's money that's, that's held in bondage. Uh, and uh, the town really doesn't get to use it unless we come up with a purpose, you know, so. It, um, so to move along, if we can. Actually, uh, Bill, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, Mark, um, I'm sorry, I should have asked. I just wanted to say this is a great there. conversation. I do have to excuse myself, and uh, I really do appreciate you allowing me to zoom in today. So thank you. Well, thanks to your colleagues in the budget committee for allowing you to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Take care. Yep. Good night. So I think the third item on my agenda here is the one we want to spend a little bit more time on tonight. And I think the last item, additional funds, we've actually backed into already with Mike's suggestion of an IT fund, question that Charlie's raised about consolidating some funds and so on. So I'm going to think that we maybe touched on that in, or if we have extra time tonight when people don't want to go home. But let's let's talk about this issue of the distinction between funds for maintenance and annual operating budgets for maintenance, because I think that was a hot button in the budget process last year. Um, do, do we understand what the, the difference is? Uh, why oil changes don't work, but what, what kind of maintenance does work? So the way I sort of characterize the question, I see Melissa nodding. So, well, that's one possible, that's, but that's, that's only a guideline that I found some planning commissions use. I asked Kim, we were getting ready for tonight, and she if she knew of any real guidelines that the town had, and I think you told me you weren't aware of any. So take it away. Chris, it's all yours. This was your big topic of the <laughs> budget cycle. Yeah, I'll throw it out to any budget committee members who have a thought. There seem to be lots of thoughts during the actual meetings. I, okay. I I would just say Wait, let's, that can we let Melissa go? Sorry, she uh, was about to talk. What? Oh, please first. Oh wait, oh, please. <laughs> okay. So if somebody were to need the ten thousand dollars and wanting to know which fund to take it out of, and it doesn't meet the qual 
qualifications of ten thousand dollars if if we're going to set that as a qualification just pretend that might be a lot to take out of the operating budget in one year so to me the ten thousand feels a little high john uh, I think one place that we got into this last year had to do with the communications fund. And uh, um, that was set up for uh, the maintenance and replacement. And I don't know how it's worded because I haven't gone back looking through the, the wording of the, the warrant article, but it was set up to replace or maintain the equipment and basically in dispatch uh, and it was done, I think, on a 10 or 12 year ex life expectancy. Um, separating out maintenance from, from uh, replacement and so forth in that case is, is very difficult because uh, some of the things, if they go down, you throw them away and uh, so you have to replace and, them. So, uh, and maybe I'm misspeaking, Chief, so correct me. I think that I go back to Chief Lyons, the original intention, even though the wording says, fire department radios, my guess is the original intention of the Warren article was to be replacement of expensive equipment, right? Versus maintenance of a computer monitor, which might cost a thousand dollars. I'm just using that as a bad example. Um, so understand, and I think that goes to your question too, right? So it's, I, there's going to be gray area, at least in my opinion, sometimes, and that's a good discussion to have. And that's why at least I think we're lucky we have some flexibility um, given that the purposes are a little bit broader, I think then it becomes a discussion of a budget committee or selectmen or agents to expend where that, can that money come out of that account? Or do we want to bring it out of operating expense, right? And looking at in, in real time during that a year and a half later, is that the right place to take it out of? I, I don't know how we're not going to have any gray areas leading this to say we're still going to have those moments unless we get very specific, very specific on the purposes for each fund. Joe, I recall in this discussion that you had some reservations about, I'm gonna call them small amounts, just adding up and creating a lot of extra effort that the trustees probably wouldn't want to deal with. Well, I could tell you a guy in my past business life about a guy who built a new complete plant by buying, sending in everything under $25,000 so, so the people above him didn't have to approve it. Okay, so he built like a two and a half million dollar processing plant in pieces. Um, Smart. I was going to ask on a side. I was going to ask Kim a question. Exactly. If to change the purposes of a given fund that's on the books right now, is that a sixty percent or two thirds vote at a town meeting? Yeah. Yep. Two thirds vote. And, and you can the, close it just with a simple majority. And oddly, you could, you could create but, a new one with a simple majority, right? Correct. Yeah. Changing a purpose is a bigger deal. Okay. Oh, Bill, give me your question again. When we were having these discussions in the last budget cycle, there were a number of proposals in front of the budget committee to maybe take some money out of a, a reserve account and use it to replace uh, an, an, item, an item that was in the operating budget in order to reduce the operating budget. My recollection was that you had some distaste for a number of small items in the <clears throat> two or $3,000 range being uh, accumulated and taken out of a cap uh, out of a reserve account. Uh, yeah, but it was more like, what, what is the thing re being replaced with? Like if, uh, is it buying a set of tires for a truck or is it putting a new engine in a truck or is it a new truck itself? So you were more concerned about what it was being used for yes, than the amount. Was, yes. Ah, that's good. Good clarification. So I, I guess what, getting back to the communications thing, uh, once again, we have this fund for dispatch, which other towns apparently pay into a proportion uh, through their fees. So uh, we could have one of our smaller radios go down and it could be under $10,000, but it seems like since all these towns are contributing to, to that, capital fund and it was set up for maintenance and replacement that that would be the place that the money would come from or not from a from an operating 
I don't think that's true. Kim, does uh, the capital reserve amount that's put in by the voters of New London is what the trustees get. Do, what happens to the money that the other towns contribute to the operation of the dispatch center? Is that just going to general revenue? On the revenue side, we have the amount of money from the towns. And part of the money that we charge them is the portion of the, I think it's 36,000 that we're putting in. 34,000, yeah, yeah. That's right. So in the revenue side, we get the money in from the town. Certainly the check comes from the town of New London because the town meeting raises and appropriates the entire amount, which it has to. And then there are revenues on the other side, similar to dispatching, right? We raise and appropriate the entire dispatching budget and we have a percentage that comes from other towns. So as far as you're concerned, it comes from the town of New London, but there is a revenue side okay. that accounts for the amount that comes from the dispatching billing. What was John suggesting that I could write you a check for say, uh, Wilmot's share of expenses and without wondering what the purpose is for? I don't think he oh. said that. What did I say? I thought you said that it's other towns are contributing money and that money's going into, their contributions are going into the capital reserve fund. Uh, I did errantly, um, but I, I think what they are, they are contributing money, as, as Kim pointed out, for replacement and maintenance of equipment. It comes in as a, as a revenue. I don't know the actual bookkeeping methods on all this, but we have, in my mind, an obligation to these five towns that's implied by all this, and that when a piece of equipment goes down, we don't take it out of our operating expense, we should take it out of the capital reserve, but. Uh, That's true. Th I was wondering if you were trying to make a distinction between New London's money and the capital reserve, same account or uh, Wilmot's or Warner's or something like that. No, there's no distinction. There's one capital reserve fund for communication equipment. Okay. So all I the towns in the, that we dispatch for benefit from whatever equipment we buy. So but I made a decision. An emergency situation that you would bill the other towns for their share of the emergency. No, no, no. Can't do that. So let me interrupt here. Uh, I made a decision on the agenda tonight uh, that we had discussion of dispatch fees. And when I knew that John Lewis wanted to speak about his his plan, I asked him not to talk about that tonight, other than to say we're working on it because I knew we were going to run run out of time and I didn't want to cut John off any worse than I, I did. So um, I think, Kim, on the next agenda, maybe we'll come back to that and you can do your presentation to us on how the dispatch fees are uh, accounted for, I mean, are, are, are uh, determined and then how they're accounted for and so on. So we, we, we I took that off the agenda tonight so that John could speak. I'm sorry. Lindsay? Um, this is more of a general question. Do we have a schedule of uh, just our asset depreciation as far as equipment goes? Um, take, you know, one of Bob's trucks. Uh, do we factor in like end of use resale value at seven or eight years versus 10 to 12? I know we do resell some of our equipment when it when, ages. When we resell, that money goes into the general fund. Correct. And we account for that in the budget under revenues. We'll anticipate if we know that Bob's going to buy a new truck, we'll estimate the cost of the sale price of the old asset. Right. And it goes into revenue, which reduces taxes. I guess what I'm asking is, do we have a depreciation schedule? On. I think what Lindsay's asking is like in 10 years, if he's planning to sell something, do we account for that? Like, oh, you know, six years from now, he's going to sell a truck and we're expecting to get $40,000. And is it more appropriate to start looking at it six years, well, what its value is for resale? Well, that, that definitely, I mean, Bob does, he's been asked to hold off on purchasing things till later, which increases the repairs and decreases the sale item. But unlike a business, we 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 don't know when we're going to sell something, right? So we don't actually plan six years in advance for revenues. We do mm -hmm. revenues each and every year. Right. And you do the budget. No, I'm just. It's, but I mean, if we would, if we if we decided to increase revenues, we could sell a, a vehicles and equipment sooner. That definitely would increase revenues. Uh, it it's probably too much to get into. I just I think there's there can be opportunities to evaluate asset depreciation 
um, long term so that we can look at it and how it's depreciating over over time and factor in when it's a more appropriate time versus its value than just saying, okay, every 10 years, we're going to replace this truck and we're going to feed into the capital reserves because of that. My guess is, Lindsay, that each of the department heads has that in their own mind, but they pretty much when they come to see the selectmen and the budget committee know that what we're going to ask them to do is, to, can you just wait another year? Right. And that's why I thought perhaps a schedule of asset yeah. depreciation might be useful. I, I suspect they all have it, Bob. Right now, it's kind of hard to predict. As I mean, right now, if you were to sell a vehicle, you're going to get pretty good money for it. And mainly the reason for that is because of supply chain issues. I can't get a price on a truck right now. I've got my name in for the next one. That's the best they can do for me. So I don't even know when it's going into production or they won't give me any of that information. Um, the same goes for the private sector. They go to get a truck, they can't get one. So that drives the truck values up. Two years from now, they could be bottomed out and you're not gonna get hardly anything from them. So it's, a, it's highly volatile as far as where you're gonna be. I don't think you could plan on that with our plow trucks anyway. So Chris, I'm looking at the clock and I'm looking at people seem to be sort of slowing down here. Are there more things that the budget committee would like to accomplish tonight? And then I would just like to ask, I'll give Vivi a heads up, since she sits on both of these committees, whether she has any um, thoughts that she can bring forward from the school board to help us think about this. But I'll sure. let you go first. I'll, I'll uh, throw it out to budget committee members. Any additional thoughts or questions? Uh, just clarification on next steps, if there are any. Um, Bill, I think what I heard us say is agency status relative to certain funds might be looked at. Uh, fund consolidation might be looked at. Um, maybe looking at a percentage range for directional uh, funding might be looked at with a possible allocation methodology recommendation that could come back to the select board and town administration. And is that, are those three actions something you'd want? I have all those on my pad. I don't know if-, if um, Want to happen maybe. and who would do that? And is that a budget committee function or- Well, I think it's a function of all three of the groups that are represented here. We're all elected. Yeah. And we all, none of us report to each other. Um, it's sort of th three legged stool. And I think that what I would suggest is that Bibi and I, with Bibi wearing her select person hat, will sit down with Janet in the course of the getting ready for the next financial cycle here and talk about these specific things that you've listed and a couple of others I have. I would suspect Chris has a list. Um, and the next time the budget committee gets uh, set, meets, it will consider some of these topics. And I think um, the trustees will have the opportunity if they heard anything tonight that they wanna talk about and then come back to us. And that perhaps later in the process this fall, as we're all coming back together again, we can compare can notes. You know, the selectmen might come and say, you know, we like everything the way it is. And the budget committee can come back and say, where, where were you the other night? Um, you know, we think there's these six things they ought to work on. And so it'll be an opportunity for each of the three groups to come together. I think it's been a useful dialogue. I've picked up some, some things. I suspect others have tonight, too, in both in terms of facts and ideas. But it, it will be a process that continues. And whether or not we've made any progress in understanding this will depend. The proof will be in January when we um, try to bring things together for another year. So the only thing I would add, Bill, is perhaps, and I do think as, as a budget committee, we can discuss, I'd like to have a meeting to discuss these issues just separate, but also have that conversation before we go to hear from the department heads on their budgets so that we go into the cycle with trying to be as aligned as possible versus then trying to face those questions during those meetings. Fair enough. Yeah. I wasn't trying to set your schedule for you. Yeah, that would be nice too. Bill? Yeah. I appreciate a lot of the stuff that's been put together here. I think it would be really interesting if this sheet here could be extended uh, backward, well, 
Lynn, thank you. Uh, Don't thank I, me. <laughs> I think it would be great if we could go back maybe 10 years and just watch flows of, and, and it's, it sounds like uh, I, I saw the frown, yeah. <laughs> um, but to see what the what the the flow is of the uh, of the capital during that time. Here we're seeing three years worth, and it's you know it seems pretty constant. But it'd be interesting to see how that uh, that is carried out. The other thing is that uh, in the past, and maybe I missed it this year, uh, we had sheets that would show, for instance, uh, public works projection of the equipment that they were going to replace and the anticipated prices that were put in there at those times. And, uh, and whereas the software in the future might sort of obviate the need for all that, uh, it seems to me right now when we're trying to get a feel for all these things, that if we could have those sheets available again, it would be quite useful. Melissa, go ahead. All right, so I've got to get into technology. <laughs> Um, if we could have the, a graphed out, is that that too much? Instead of me looking at all these, let's see this one bridge maintenance field go up and down in a graph, and then also put estimated inflation on there. I'm not that good in Excel. <laughs> it's all in Excel. We have no software that can have No, that's us what you guys approved last budget cycle for me to purchase in 2024 yeah, that that will be do able it. to probably do something like that for this yeah good question listen yeah I, I was going to point out that i don't know if 10 years is the right we can do that but let's also fifty thousand dollars 10 years ago is not fifty thousand dollars today right so let's keep that in consideration anything else from budget colin i just uh is there any value in benchmarking these numbers against other towns of similar size. <laughs> or at least to talk about it. I know that I was at one of the NHMA classes and they made a reference to a program. Actually, I sent it to Lynn. What is it called, Lynn? It's a New Hampshire, I don't know. It's got a it's got all this data in it from all the towns. You can literally go in and look by department by expense by whatever, it'd be interesting to know, we're doing it for wages, we're benchmarking things, what are other towns doing in this regard to help identify whether we're way off mark or on mark? I guess you'd have to, we could do that, but then you'd have to dive into each department to see what equipment they have and is everything exactly the same or, you know, there's so many, at least in my mind, there's so many semantics of like saying, well, compared to this town, but that town only has five full-time police officers versus what we have, right? So that comparison could be fine, but then there's a lot of devil in the details. I'm not saying we can't do that, but I also think that that's going to raise tons of questions that we don't have the answer to. Mm -hmm. My own opinion. Maybe, maybe last word. Um, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, wrapping my brain around all of this. The, I appreciate this conversation about the capital reserve accounts. Like I said, they work much differently than the school district. So I'm trying to okay. get a hold on that. But thanks very much. I look forward to working with all of you. Great. Well, what I'm going to suggest then, uh, Chris, is that you close your meeting. And, and BB and I have to continue our agenda. We've got several more things to okay. cover here before we get to go home. Well, since number four is any other business, any other business, budget committee members. Okay, do we have any motions to adjourn? Any seconds? I'll give John the motion to adjourn. Or did, did you say that? You did. Lindsay, would you like to second? Lindsay seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Hi. All right. Meeting's ended. Thank you. Thank you all very much for spending the time. And as you leave, if you leave quietly and talk in the hall, then BB and I could get Kim and the rest of the staff home. Okay. Have the next item. Next item is to approve two sets yeah. of minutes. Okay. What, one I wasn't here for. So I'd have to abstain. Which, which one were you not here for? The, the 24th. 24th. Okay, so I would I like to move to approve the May 10th meeting. May 10th meeting, and I would like to um, 
I'll second that. And then I would like to make an amendment that we add to the minutes in the appropriate place that Mr. Jakes confirmed that water for fire suppression will be provided by the precinct for the Continuum and Twin Pines projects. Agreed. That's not in the minutes it's there, yeah. but he did speak at the end of the <laughs> meeting. Is that all right with you? Oh, yeah, okay. So will you agree to that amendment? Yes, I agree. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes of the uh, 10th? Aye. Aye. And I guess we can't do the 24th since you aren't because one person can't prove saying. anything. Right. Okay, so moving smartly along through the rest of this quickly, <laughs> just note that our next meeting on June 21st is in the Sid Crook room, not here, oh. because this bill, this facility is not available. <clears throat> okay. Um, and just before we go to pay vouchers, I have two sort of things for you to sleep on so that when Janet gets back, we can talk about them. Okay. One, one is the idea of having a summer town meeting where we oh, yeah. gather uh, the residents and bring them up to date on major things that are going on from the police work to well, the, the priorities on our list. Mm -hmm. And then we can add water to that, mm -hmm. that list. So I, I think we ought to talk with Janet about that. Obviously, you and I can't decide that alone. But right. Similar they, to the community meeting that they just had at the college. Perfect. Exactly. Yep. yep. Um, so if we could put that on the next agenda, that would be great. And the, the other thing is a follow up to the discussion we've just had. You may know that the budget process here <clears throat> um, has been that we set aside eight or 10 meetings and each department head comes and mm -hmm. makes a presentation to us. Yep. And um, and we we listen and then we um, at the end decide what we want to do sometime um, in the late fall. And then we send the uh, our proposed budget on to the um, budget committee. And my sense is, and then they do the same process all over again. Mm -hmm. They call in the department heads and so on. Yep. And, and my sense is that this may be the year to try something different because I think the department heads in the years that I've been here do a pretty good job of preparing their bu budgets. I think Kim scrubs the ridiculous out of them mm -hmm. um, and Lynn sc scrubs a little bit more. So I was thinking, what would happen if we tried ha the selectmen, not the budget committee, you still have to do that. Right, right. <laughs> Had a, what I call a fall budget day, take a Saturday mm -hmm. in, the, in the fall and ask everybody to come in and for four hours, listen to their presentations as we otherwise would do over Spread eight out. over eight different weeks um take that under consideration at a subsequent meeting decide what we want to do send our proposed budget on to the budget committee and use all the time we've saved to deal with other business of the town that's so, so think about that yep so can i let me just get this straight so you you do the department head budget presentations split over however many meetings or doing it this way yes. present the budget proposed budget to the budget committee then the budget committee goes and listens to the presentations all over again yes yeah after they have each and they also visit because of different, yeah. they, they visit and you probably do some of this too go visit the department yeah. the different departments they line up in little teams of two or three people and go around to the library the fire department and so on what so, i'm saying is uh, for the selectmen to consolidate their part of that yeah. process into a Budget jamboree yep. day. No, I, 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 and I understand the intent of it. Of course, it, the back to the school district again. Not to keep bringing that up. Yeah. The, the way we did it was we had joint meetings with the budget committee, where all the department heads made their presentations to both committees at the same time, and which was beneficial to us, also uh, both boards, because we could hear the questions that the budget committee were were asking of the principals. For it was the principals yeah. and, and some department heads. Um, as the budget committee could hear the the questions that were coming from the board so it was it was helpful but i don't it doesn't sound like the way this process works that would that would be able to be done that we way we tried to do that way back when yeah um i remember my family was on the budget committee i don't know i'm just like on board at the time and yeah tried to do that and it didn't take <laughs> okay um because their the time is important budget it's, committee came and they sat and they listened yeah. and so on yeah but then they did, they did it all over again. they did it all over again okay so what i'm saying is 
yeah. at the convenience of the yeah. department head say pick a Saturday yeah. and, the, and say we're going to meet at eight o'clock and yeah. at noontime we're going to be we done just, like I did today. Yep. Yeah. We need fine. to talk to Janet about it, but think yep. about it. Uh, sounds and, fine and, to uh, me because we we don't we want to take since up you all are sitting here. Because you know, so, um, so I appreciate your the three of you your feedback to to Kim on that on and Lynn. It would be a, a radically different way to do things. But my sense is that we spend a tremendous amount of time um, throughout the fall uh, listening to presentations and. So on that could all be consolidated. We 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 see you and we talk to you all a lot, and that the the and then the nuts and bolts um, questions can occur with the budget committee as as they do their process in December, and January, and so on. And then, Did of you, course, obviously, it's important for the public to be able to have the ability to listen in as well. But they have, of course, yeah. they can. That's yeah. by definition. Yeah, if I know. We are gathered together. There, he, I'm well. Just trying to think yeah. outside. Think talk. I'm talking out loud. Yeah. Is you know what's better for the community access? Doing it all day on a Saturday or splitting it up over me. That's all. I'm just talking. Or two Saturdays. That's, that's or, what I went to do. Or, is process. Or, or two Thursday nights, or whatever. Yep. I just pick Saturday because yep. I think. No, it's four, a good. Four idea. hours on one Saturday morning is more likely to happen than four hours at night. Yeah. But I don't no. know. Do you all have a reaction? I mean, you're here. Colin, you're here too. <laughs> shoot, shoot, me, shoot, shoot me down. I'm about ready to end the meeting. <laughs> uh, would there be consideration for it to happen during a weekday? Sure. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I picked Saturday, but sure, it could be any day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's and, all the better if, if, because that's when you all work. Some of you, some of you work 24 right. seven. Yeah. Just asking. I suppose. Um, and is this a meeting where the public is, um, I mean, they're always welcome, but do they come and give feedback during this meeting? It will be a workshop like tonight. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. If there were any consideration for um, weekday uh, possibilities, that would, I think. More importantly, how do you feel about trying to put it up, have one, what I call budget jamboree day or two, as opposed to, you know, the eight or 10 weeks of stuff. <laughs> you might have an opinion. Hmm? I do have an opinion, which is very rare in a meeting. Um, I like the idea because there are times when as department heads, we're asked a question that we don't necessarily have the answer right at our fingertips. And by the time it comes back around or we're back there and nobody remembers they even asked that question. So it's it would be really nice to have it all together. Like we're, we're, we're discussing it or you come when you finally come to a vote to vote on it. Do you remember what was said, you know, six weeks ago or? Back. So I, I really think that that a, a consolidated conversation where you go all the way through it would be very beneficial. Chief Lyon, do you have an opinion? <laughs> You're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> you usually have an opinion. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Whatever you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Kim, how about you? You're the town administrator. I, I'm happy either way. I think I can see benefit, as Lynn points out. Over several nights, things get forgotten. Everybody could be there, ready to go. I think Sunapi may do that. They don't have a budget committee, but they have a all day Friday. Yeah, in Friday. out. Oh, everybody right. talks. You hear about this. You know, if you okay. hear something about the fire department, there's a model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Efficient. I think it. I think it would be efficient. Let's go off and sleep on it. Let's think about it, literally, and um, begin that when Janet's next, maybe on a more formal basis, I'll try to write something up. But I've been doing this now for about fifteen years in one form or another, and it seems to me it's there are ways to do it more efficiently than we've been doing it. Well done, thinking outside the box. <laughs> well, that well, it's two in one night. That's probably the most we allowed to do. No. Um, okay. Uh, no. Colin, yes. I, I'm generally okay with it. My only concern, um, caution is probably a better word, um, is if you do it during the week, and I can appreciate the value of that, is whether or not people who might want to attend or are working, what they might say. So you just need to keep that in mind. Thank you, Colin. That, that, that's a good point. Of course, one of the benefits now of the recording 
yeah. is I think we have more people that listen to the recording than come to our meetings anyway. But th thank you. That's a good su good suggestion. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we just have uh, pay vouchers left, uh, vouchers and permits and so on to sign. And then I think we can go. Good. 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 Thank you.